What we're going to talk about is whether you should use a pack or uh, handheld water bottles during your ultra marathon. All right, let's get into it. Good morning, everyone. Going for my relatively short uh, run this morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Temps are low, of course. Uh, this is the best time of day to run for sure. So looking at uh, neighborhood run, probably three to four miles. We'll see how I feel. Welcome back everybody once again. Again, my name is Dan, I'm the Ultra Dad, and I really appreciate you coming to, to watch my channel. I'm um, really having fun with it, and uh, uh, super, super happy that it's summer and that we get a chance to run races finally. So, hope you have had some fun doing that, and uh, hope you've had some fun watching my racing as well. So tonight, I wanna talk about using a pack versus using handhelds, or vice versa, whichever you prefer. Why do you use a pack or why do you use handheld water bottles? Um, this is a topic that actually came up during a live stream I was watching the other night and it really struck a chord with me because I think most most ultra runners um, probably have gone back and forth um, with, with these, these options. Um, so just so we know what we're talking about here, this is a Nathan handheld water bottle. It comes with a um, uh, compartment here that can zip up. Uh, every handheld is a little bit different, but this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a handheld. You put your hand in here, you can cinch it down, uh, so it, it's supposed to kind of disappear on your hand as you're running and you kind of forget about it. But you can store things and you can drink from the water bottle. And I have a second one that's just like it. It's upstairs though, so I don't have it to show you, but you can use one or two. That's what I mean by using a handheld hydration system, handheld water bottle. And then the other option, of course, is a hydration pack. So this is my Solomon. It's an older Solomon. I think it's, oh boy, what is it? I always forget. It's a 10 liter pack. Um, it's more of like a, I think it's more of like a, an adventure pack because it's not, it's pretty bulky. Um, they really have done a much better job uh, more recently with their packs. The newer packs are much better, but um, this is not one of the skin scents or whatever it's called um, packs, but it is very nice. It's a Solomon. It's lasted me. It's gone through It's gone through a bunch of races and training, so it's, it's high quality. It's done a good job. Anyway, but this is a hydration pack. It has um, the usually hydration packs have a water bladder in the back, um, although some do not. Some of the newer ones do not. Uh, some of them are just designed to have water bottles in the front strap uh, pockets here. If you have the bladder in the back, it usually comes with a tube. So that's what I'm talking about. So are we, do we go with the handheld or do we go with the pack? Well, I've done both actually now. So for a long time, I just used the pack. And um, I, when I first started uh, running ultra marathons, longer distance races, I got the pack um, mostly just because I was kind of afraid that I would forget something. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure I had all my stuff in it. And there's some good things about that, but there's also some drawbacks, and we'll go into that in a few minutes. Um, then um, I'd say after about running for about a year, I went ahead and got uh, a couple of these handhelds um, because it is nice not to have something on your back. And um, it does come with this compartment. So is this enough space? Um, 
and it kind of depends on the person you ask. So uh, until recently though, I had never actually used this. I didn't have the courage to just use handhelds during an ultra marathon. But recently at the doggone long run 50 miler, that entire 50 miler, all I, all I took were my two handhelds. So I had one on my other hand, one on each hand, and that's all I used. I, with the exception that I did use my flip belt as well. So um, you've seen that before, but it's a nice belt that you can wear around your waist that can take a phone or a GoPro. Um, can, you can put gels. You can even put some kind of hydration in there, although I've never found a water bottle that really worked well with my flip belt. So I had my flip belt and I had my two handhelds. So I figured after that experience, I might as well share with you which one worked better for me and what I thought were some of the positives and negatives of each option. So let's talk first about using your pack, since that's what I started with, uh, with my ultra marathon, um, I don't know, experience. <laughs> so with, with the pack, it's very nice because number one, it's a less, I believe it's a lower risk option. You are gonna be able to remember, that, well, if, if, you know, you're gonna be able to put more in it, so you're not gonna forget things. Um, so if you need, if you overpack, you know, I don't know how many of you are underpackers or overpackers, but I tend to be an overpacker. Um, I like to try to pack light, but I always am a little bit paranoid about missing something. When I went to, to run Fat Dog um, up in the mountains in Canada, um, I definitely didn't want to not have something that I needed when I was up there. You could be very isolated way up there in the mountains. So I, you know, and not to mention there were a bunch of things that were required, a bunch of required gear you had to have. So I had this thing packed to the gills. The absolute, I mean, it was so full of stuff. Um, you know, all the required survival gear, you know, everything I possibly could need in here. Plus I filled it with a bunch of water so that I wouldn't run out. If you like the form factor of having um, a hydration bladder uh, on your back instead of, you know, in your hands or instead of on your chest, having the hydration, having a, an actual, you know, pack gives you most of the time, gives you the chance to have this hydration bladder in the back of it with the tube. So some people like the tube, some people don't, you know, the tubes get kind of they can get kind of dirty. You have to be real careful and clean them well. Um, I had to buy a special brush to clean it out um, because stuff starts to grow in that tube. So, you know, in the hybrid hydration pack itself can be kind of cumbersome when you come up to an aid station, you have to open it up. I tell you what, uh, I, I don't know who it was, but someone recently, oh, I know who it was, uh, Ryan Day from I Run On Beer, his, that he has a YouTube channel. Um, but he talks about at the Mohican 100 how he, it was really hard for them to open up his hydration bladder itself. Um, and mine does the same thing. It sometimes will get stuck. I don't know if it's maybe the powder that gets stuck in the slider, but it becomes really, really hard to open sometimes. So that can really be a pain. Um, but, you know, it kind of depends on what you like. So I think overall it's a lower risk option. Um, and you can pack a whole lot more in, in the pack, so in, in an actual hydration pack. So anyway, um, so that's that option. Now, the more recent option I've been opting for, I've been using are these handheld water bottles. This in particular one is made by Nathan. Uh, again, I have two of these. Um, the positives of having these are you don't have that heavy bag on your back. You just feel it's the, it's a freer sensation. Freer? I don't know if that's really a good use of that word, but you feel much much more free, uh, much lighter because you don't have all that weight on your back. And I know, I know, we're not talking about 20 pounds or 40. I know that you hikers and backpackers are gonna give me a hard time in the comments, but even with the, these this pack, you do feel when it's filled with water and other gear, um, it's definitely weighing you down a bit, especially when you're trying to run. So, having these hydration these bottles instead, if you can pack what you need in this in this little compartment here, uh, times two, if you have two, um, it really is nice to have that freer sensation on your back, that lighter sensation, not having any weight there. One of the big concerns, though, with that is that you won't have, like I said, you. It depends on whether you can put what you need in these little compartments. Um, one of the concerns is you won't have everything and you will have forgotten something. So that's where experience comes in. And uh, when I ran the 50 miler recently, the doggone long run 50 miler, I was very surprised at the fact that I, not once did I complain or was I disappointed or concerned that I didn't have what I needed with me. So now it does help certainly to have aid stations along the way. Um, I think it's obviously easier to, um, it's less risky of course and easier to deal with when it's a shorter race, like a 50 miler versus a 100 miler. 
Um, obviously with a 200 miler, you're not going to want to go with handhelds. Um, you will see some people do that do 100 milers with handhelds, but honestly, I'm not sure if I would be willing to risk that. But with the 50 miler, I was I was amazed at the fact that I was able to put everything I needed in these compartments. Uh, of course, I had two of them, and I still had some space, some room. And again, I did have my my flip belt around my waist, so that also carried some stuff. But that wasn't even that full, so I was amazed. Um, I took a risk. I was a little bit nervous about it, but. In the end, I really didn't feel that um, I was missing out by having just these bottles and just these small compartments. So disadvantages of having the hand handhelds, I see two big disadvantages. Number one, there was a couple times during the race where I realized that I had run out of water um, because each of these bottles is 16 fluid ounces. So I had two bottles, 32 ounces. Um, that pack has 50 ounces, so almost twice as much water. Um, than or fluids or whatever you're drinking tailwind I drink that too um, then you get with the bottles so as long as you have water drops along the way um, maybe some unmanned aid stations with water or you have plenty of aid stations um, every three or four miles five miles that's usually not an issue another disadvantage is while it's nice not to have the weight on your back at times you do feel as if you your hands are kind of I don't know how to describe it, like they're trapped, they're like bound and weighed down with these water bottles. Um, I usually get used to it, so during the 50 miler, um, I, I it pretty much, they disappeared on my hands after a while, I didn't even think about it, but I could see some people not being able to get over that or not being able to adjust and get used to that. So just keep that in mind and you definitely would want to try these out for a long training run, for example, before you try to go race um, even a 50K with just water bottles. Um, Although I would tell you, at this point, I think I'll definitely, any 50K that I run will be with handhelds. I'll never wear a pack again for a 50K. 50 miler, it probably depends on the terrain. For a relatively flat 50 miler like I did a couple weeks ago, definitely this would be in order, I think. Um, however, for something in the mountains, I probably would opt for a pack still. So, and anything over 50 milers, I think I definitely would still go with the pack. Um, just because of my, I don't know, paranoia that I'd forget something, uh, and need something um, in a more isolated area. Um, so, and perhaps in a race where aid stations are, are you know, much further apart. So that's pretty much all I have. Um, I definitely think that there is a place for a hydration pack versus uh, handhelds, but I was amazed just how useful these things are. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Um, I do think most ultra runners have, put, have thought about this issue uh, before. Um, because these handhelds can be awfully nice if it makes sense and if it's the right race. So once again, definitely train, train with your gear before you race with your gear. And that's pretty common for people to say um, that are into ultra marathoning, but that's definitely something you should do. That goes for everything with your gear, with your hydration, your nutrition, uh, gels, especially things like that, food. Make sure you train with it before you race with it. So. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit the like thumbs up if you like this video in particular and the bell notification um, because over the next couple months, I'm gonna be doing quite a few videos about my training for the Grindstone 100. Um, and I'd love to have you along for the, for the ride. So thanks again. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Strava. Uh, I post all my workouts on Strava too. Friend me, like me, follow me. You know, I'd love to, to follow you as well. And thanks again for watching this video. All right, I think I'm done. We'll catch you in the next one.